Welcome back, everyone. So uh, we're in our dating series. Part, what part are we in? This is part three. Thank you. Part three of our dating series. And uh, today's discussion is going to be the first date. How does that sound? Easy, right? He calls you, you make a time, you call him, you make a time, you get dressed, you go, you have a first date, you come home, date is over. But for some reason, it's not that easy, is it? For some reason, it's become a convoluted mess. So what I want to do is start, as I usually do, with an article I found. This is actually from the New York Times from uh, January 2013, a little over years ago, a year ago, by Alex Williams. And uh, this article was called The End of Courtship. This was sent to me by a, uh, a dating victim. And um, the, uh, the discussion goes like this. Maybe it was because they had met on OkCupid, okay but when the dark-eyed musician and the artfully disheveled haired asked Shani Silva, by the way, every one of these stories is always Jewish, everyone knows that? Shani Silva, oh my God, it might as well just be like Jew, Jew, Jew. A social media <laughs> and blog manager in Philadelphia out on a date. That's an inverted, I did not put, the inverted commas are there. Uh, she was expecting at least a drink one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. At 10 p.m., I hadn't heard from him, said Miss Silva, 30 years old, who wrote, oh sorry, who wore her favorite skinny black jeans. Thanks for telling me that. Finally, at 10.30, he sent her a text message. Here we go again. Hey, I'm at Pub and Kitchen. Want to meet up for a drink or whatever, he wrote. That's what it says. Uh, before adding, I'm here with a bunch of friends from college. Oh, it's already looking ugly. Turned off, she fired back a text message, like a gun. She fired back a text message, politely declining, but in retrospect, she might have adjusted her expectations. The word date should almost be stricken from the dictionary, Miss Silver said. Dating culture has evolved to a cycle of text messages, each one requiring the code-breaking skills of a Cold War spy to interpret. It's one step below a date, and one step above a high five. <laughs> uh, she added, dinner at a romantic new bistro? Question mark. Forget it. Women in their 20s these days are lucky to get a last minute text to tag along. Raised in the age of so-called hookup culture millennials, who are reaching an age where they are started to think about settling down, are subverting the rules of courtship. Instead of a dinner for a movie, which seems as obsolete as a rotary phone, hello, hello, calling Philadelphia, they rendezvous over phone texts, Facebook posts, instant messages, and other non-dates that are leaving a generation confused about how to land a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Hmm. The new date is hanging out, said Denise Hewitt, not Jewish, 24, an associate television producer in Manhattan, maybe she is, in Manhattan, who is currently developing a show about this frustrating new romantic landscape. As one male friend recently told her, I don't like to take girls out, I like to have them join in on what I'm doing, going to events, a concert. Okay, then it carries on, carries on, other nonsense. And then it says, many students today have never been on a traditional date, said Donna Freitas, who has taught religion and gender studies at Boston University in Hofstra. Hookups may be fine for college students, but what about after, when they start to build an adult life? That's what she says over here. Um, that also means that suitors need to keep dates cheap and casual. A fancy dinner, you're lucky if you get a drink. It's like online job applicants. You can target many people simultaneously. It's like darts on a dartboard. Eventually, one will stick, said Joshua Sky, 26, a branding coordinator from Manhattan, describing the attitudes of many singles in their 20s. The mass mailer approach necessitates cost-cutting, going to bars, meeting for coffee the first time, he added, because you only want to invest in a mate you're going to get more out of. Fortunately, he doesn't explain what more out of means, which I'm very grateful over here <laughs> for. Okay, so basically this whole article was pretty much, I'm telling you, the end of dating. Is that what's happened? We don't date anymore? And so, I found something else, very interesting. And this is actually, this is brilliant, I'm so pleased I found this, um, match.com, does an annual survey, did you know this? They interview five and a half thousand singles, not necessarily on their website, to ask them questions and take a survey. They make a very fancy presentation online, and it's called Singles in America. You actually go to singlesinamerica.com 
Uh, let me just double check that. I believe that is the website. You can look, don't look it up now. You're in my class. But that is, uh, yes, Citizen America, SIA. Okay. So some of the results they came out with when it comes to this stuff, okay? <clears throat> First dates count a lot. More than half of singles said they've imagined a future together whilst on a first date. You don't do that? You ever look at this person and think, can I spend the rest of my life with this individual? Surprisingly, what do you think? More men or women feel that way? More men or women feel that way? Hey, hands up men. I mean, hands up, you think it's men. I think it was women, put your hands up, I think it's women. I would have said the same thing, no. The statistics tell us 51% of singles said they have imagined a future together whilst on a first date. 56% of men, 48% of women. Wow, imagine that. That's quite surprising. Online dating sites are more responsible for most first dates, 31%, more so than meeting someone through a friend. 92% of single men feel comfortable if slash when a woman asks them out. What are the big three criteria for a first date? What do you think? I wouldn't have got this one. The singles judge a first date are, at 83%, grammar. Wait, he speaks well? Hey, yo. Like, nah, I don't think so. Is that what it is? Grammar? Like, are you conjugating again? Could you, could you not conjugate on a date, please? Because you're conjugating incorrectly. Uh, confidence, 78%. And which body part... Um, is a, uh, not a good question to ask. Uh, but in fact, I'm asking it and giving you a clue. Which body part do you think people look at, first of all, on a date? Teeth is correct. You have nice teeth, I can see that. You're beaming. <laughs> Bee! All right, don't think it's on my teeth, no. Okay, teeth seem to be the big thing. I have seen people who come to meet me to ask me dating advice, and they have things stuck in their teeth. It is disgusting. <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting, okay? You have no excuses, check, use your phone, use something, use a, use a paper clip, I don't care, just get it out, okay? I'm not saying they do that on a date, but I talked to the rabbi with halitosis, I don't think it's a, uh, such a good idea. Um, how much are singles uh, spending on their dates? So singles spend per month on a date, what do you think, on dating, just a month? Give me a great, 3,000? Are you taking them to France? What are you doing? $3,000 a month on dating. How much are you making? You know what? You can donate some money over here. Date a few less women and support my center. $3,000? was like Cartier on the first date. You say $3,000 a month on a date? Are you in jail? $3,000? What are you eating for God's sake? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? $61. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. And 53 cents per month on their data. Doesn't sound like so much, but you know what? That adds up to $738 a year. And with how many singles here in America? This is a great statistic, I'm liking this. How many singles there in America today? 111 million singles, which makes the dating industry an $82 billion industry. And I'm not getting a penny of it. Yet. Yes. Um, nine, okay, we did that already. Uh, okay, what's the number one favorite activity of singles for a first date? Coffee. Well, what? Drink. Cocktails, drinks, drinks, Coffee. drinks. Actually says that they want to go for dinner on a first date. I don't know if you have to, actually. I'm not totally for dinner, because dinner is uh, $3,000 a month, isn't it, Jamie? I hear that. What percentage of singles? Now, I've spoken about this before. What percentage of singles drink on a first date? Well, the fact you said cocktails, I'm sorry, you're all probably getting wasted on your first date. 92%. 92%. Okay, I'm not against drinking. You know, grab a beer, maybe, I don't know, a, uh, a what did someone give me the other day? A buzz bomb? You've seen that thing? A buzz ball? You know, a buzz ball thing? Like a, like a drink? Okay, never mind. Um, and uh, that's my social life right there. 90% are drinking on a first date. You cannot get drunk on a first date, even a second date. Uh, okay, this is all about it. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here it comes. What percentage of single men and women say it's okay to casually date 
more than one person at the same time. Remember, this is Match.com, five and a half thousand singles. That's a pretty big, uh, a big uh, a group. For no, 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 but for men or women? Who's, who's saying more? Who said it's okay? Is it more okay for, do you think more men said it's okay to? I was shocked. 72% of single women think it's okay to casually, casually date more than one person at the same time versus 60% of men. That's shocking. Isn't that shocking? That's ridiculous. What, really, it's not? It's okay to multiple date? Okay, I'll say it again. It's not okay. What's the most important, here's a question I want to ask, this is not rhetorical. What's the most important quality in a partner according to both men and women? The most important quality in a partner for both men and women? Uh, what, 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 what? Sense of humor. Honesty. Honesty. Loyalty. Loyalty. Trust, yeah. Treats me with respect. Treats me with respect. Like, but he's funny. He's a bum, but he's funny. So I guess loyalty and trust will, I guess. But treats me with respect. 74% yeah. of singles would date someone from a different ethnic background. What percentage of singles believe you can stay married to the same person forever? That's a good question. That's a good question. I was actually, I'll give you a clue. I was delighted with this answer. 89%. But then again, I mean, who would say no to that? No, I'm dating, get married. This can't last forever. I mean, who does that? I mean, does anyone go to the chuppah? Like, yeah, this is nice, but this ain't going to last. It should be 100%, shouldn't it? I mean, just like, at least in theory. We haven't met the guy yet. Maybe there's a chance he'll, like, uh, you know, actually uh, be okay in the future, I guess. Okay, the rest was all about uh, sexual intimacy. And I'm not going to have details over there. Uh, how about this one? Uh, we'll do another class on that one, which won't be recorded. Uh, tattoos, <laughs> I'm being serious. Tattoos versus shoes. Men are more likely to judge dates by their tattoos, 62%, than their shoes, 25%. You're spending way too much money on those shoes. You could just get like a, a, sh a shoe tattooed on your arm, that's right. <laughs> I was going to say like a, an eight ball. Eight, Hillary, I, I didn't, come on, no, no. An anchor, oh. Superman. Okay, and uh, women are more likely to judge their dates by their clothes at 68% than their cars at 40%. Okay, so women are more into clothes than, you know, girls don't like that, big red, flashy red Mustang. Top down, alloy wheels, lights under the car. No, that, that, I'm gonna, they got the, the suspension and the guy, don't like that? Oh, girls aren't into that. I thought they liked that. Oh, I get that, okay. New York is, uh, if, he, if, he just, if he just pays your Metro card, you've, uh, you've, uh, you've done well. Okay, hear more of this, here we go. Uh, no, 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 okay, gay marriage. Here, put a ring on it. 79% of singles in their 20s and 62% of singles in their 30s say they want to get married. Overall, 50% of men and 55% of women are eager to wed. That's it? That's it? Eager? Could you put your hand if you're eager to get married? That's 50%? I don't believe it. Oh my God. They're right. I'm just interested. What is that? What is that? Let's, let's talk about that for a second. What is, who put the hands up over there? Do you mind? Fine. Okay, what's your name? Lexi, that's a nice name. Lexi, are you eager to get married? Not, like, right now. I mean, don't, I mean, I've got a hopper over here. I don't mean right now. <laughs> I mean, like, the not-too-distant future. You're looking at, you, is that something you're eager for? Yeah. When the dress, the cake, tables, tablecloth. All that stuff. You're looking forward to get married. I mean, I'm yeah. only kidding with you. Can I, who didn't put the hand up? Am I asking? Anybody? Who didn't put the hand up over there? Yeah, not you again. <laughs> can I, was, uh, <laughs> there's only so much I can take of you. Okay, we know your story. We're going to hear more of it, but I can't remember. Anybody here not eager to get married? Who hasn't spoken yet? Use your... No. Yeah, surprise. Okay, fine. <laughs> Once been twice shy, I hear that. Anyone else not eager to get married? Do you want to... Yeah, okay, yes. Listen, I mean, I think eager sounds like it's something that I am going... Okay, so when can this happen? Let's make it happen. Let's go. Where is it going to happen? 
Aha. Uh -huh. So you're saying eager is more like, okay, so when we're getting married, we're on a first date. No, no, when are we getting married? You're like, you're saying just be casual. Okay, fine. But inside, it's something you're eager to do. It's. She's open to the possibility of maybe marrying someone that you happen to meet. You know, I'll tell you a quick story. This is a true story. I, n I don't know her, but there's a story of a girl. It could be an urban myth, actually. Uh, there's <laughs> of who actually booked a hall and a rabbi and a caterer for one year in advance where she was without knowing a guy. And she met a guy, and she married him with that rabbi in that hall with that caterer. That's fair. <laughs> or maybe she's Jewish and like, I don't want to lose $40,000 that it takes to, uh, to make a uh, wedding. <laughs> How about this one? Okay, so we're going to discuss first date over here. God, government, and ex-girlfriends. Very important. When out on a first date, both sexes agree they would rather not discuss past relationships. 72%. That's good advice. I don't know what the other... It should be higher than that, right? Because you do not want to bring up, as real common sense, you know, as they say, sense, not so common. Uh, politics, 62%. I want to tell you a quick story. I know a couple who approached me recently, and they are, he is a far-right conservative, she's a little liberal, and they were in a serious relationship, and they were deciding whether actually they should get together and actually get married because they have such different political views. And you know what I told them? I said, you're 30, he's 35. Do you like him? Yes. You get over? Fine. You'll disagree about Iraq. You'll disagree <laughs> about Obamacare. You can get married. It's okay. When I, this is really how over Passover this happened. When I got married to my wife, we had certain opinions. It's something interesting. We had something that was dividing us. A big thing when it came to Israel and politics. Let's put it that way. And it was so big to me at the time. Such an idiot. It was so big at the time. I actually, we actually went to see my rabbi to ask him this question. And he looked at me. He's a very good man. He would never say you're an idiot. But he had those eyes that, you're an idiot. All right. what, are you, what are you doing? So whatever. He said, it's, it's inconsequential. It's irrelevant to your marriage. Just don't talk about it. Just don't talk about it. Everything else fits in. That's good enough. Happens to be that it came back to me because this girl mentioned me at Passover. I was at this hotel. And it happens to be that my wife and I have now completely changed positions we're the opposite. I've actually taken her position from before, and she's taken mine. We're the complete opposite of it. I don't know how it happened. There was a complete reversal, and we're still happily married. It really did not pay such a major thing. Don't discuss past relationships, no politics, and religion, 54%. Okay? Now, religion can be a little more tricky, because religion sometimes means your, your life. It means like, for some people, for Jewish people, I believe it many times, but maybe for other religions as well, it's not fair to say. I'm not sure an expert. But sometimes it comes up, well, how do you spend your Passover? How do you spend your holidays? It ends up being, because Judaism isn't just like a visit to the church once a week, right? Or the synagogue on a Saturday. It's a whole, like, family system of, of uh, I know someone who marries her daughters off, or basically is much happier when her daughters date guys, who come from families who are totally irreligious so that she knows she's going to get them on all the Jewish holidays. And she married off all her kids. One of them is my neighbor. She married off all her kids to guys who were themselves very into the life Jewishly. They had a very strong, but the parents did it. And she knows, Rosh Hashanah, I get them. Passover, I get them. That's how she actually helped daughters. And she always said, that's fine. Bring them home and we'll get you for the holidays. Um, okay. Uh, put a ring on it. Oh, we don't want already. Okay. Do we do that one yet? 75% of singles in their 20s and 70% of the singles don't want to get married. Over okay. Those who want to marry say they want a committed partner to share their life with. What percentage? Those who want to marry say they want a committed partner to share their life with. 86%. 86%. Emotional security? 52%. I think it's more than that. 52%. And for people to know how much they love their partner, 42%. Only 14% of singles want to get married for financial security reasons. That is, you know what? 
That is complete nonsense. <laughs> I really, I, I can't believe the researchers even <laughs> fell for that. Uh, I, the amount of times I hear, oh God. Okay, one second. Okay, this is all about, um, I'm going to finish this one. Then we'll get to my thing. Okay, let's talk about the date itself. Now, this one's a very big one. I've had this question many times. I have to agree with this. Do, do and don't. Do ask him out. 92% of single men are comfortable with a woman ask them out on a date. You don't need to be drunk in order to do that, by the way. I just want to add that caveat, right? You don't have to be like, oh, where do I go? My friend says you go. No, you can be sober. 92%, is that right, guys? The, the five guys that are up to this dating class? Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 let me just repeat this. You're saying, now it's interesting, you're saying very interesting. You're saying it's a bad precedent to do it because if you ask him out, he's going to be like, I'm free, I'm checking out. Exactly, the ball's going to be in his court, you need to keep him on his toes, he needs to court you. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the first date though. Okay, you know, the first date. First date, you're like, you need him to ask you out because if you ask him out, he's controlling the relationship. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'd like to hear another side to this. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think it's possible to, if you, if you feel like both parties are interested, to go up to the guy and say, hey, would you like to have dinner with me sometime? The guy says, that would be great. I think that would you do that? I've done it. You've done it? Yeah. Did you get a date? Yeah. Okay, it's good. <laughs> um, uh, but I feel like once you say that, you can say, oh, would you like to go out sometime? Yeah, great. And then I... I yeah, I, I find it hard to believe. What's your name? Hadass. Hadass. I find that's a nice name. I ha find it hard to believe that men are like, she asked me out once, I'm never asking her out on a date, ever. I mean, you know, I'm not making a blanket statement, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, you were, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I make loads of them. That's what I do all day. I personally feel like guys these days are le much lazier than they used to be. So I feel like- What used to be in, what do you mean, five years? No, seriously, what does that mean? Because like, I, like I hear this. 10 years, every year they get progressively lazier. They actually, actually, men are getting progressively lazier, you're saying? Right. They're like going back on the evolutionary scale. Right. Like they start like this, and every year, and eventually they end up with like their knuckles dragging on the floor like this. My sisters got married 10 years ago. Their husbands like courted them, like wine and dine them. Wine, dine them. These days it's like, ooh, like, they're not going to have sex. You hear this? Like, yeah, this? It used to be when her sister dated 10 years ago, he was there, let's go out. Now they're like drooling. Ugh. Ugh. Food, egg. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh. They need to be like, I'm trying to. No men turn it's all like women here. I get 60 women and no men in my classes. I'm trying at us. Yes, you have to retrain them. And part of that, I believe, is, I know it sounds like different, and I know our parents didn't do it this way, and our grandparents, and you know, but it's okay to be upfront. And if, I want to be very clear on this, if you feel as though you don't have the guts to directly go up to a person, which you did, which I admire and I respect, that's him, it's okay to ask a friend to find out for you. And say, by the way, are you interested in my friend? No, that's, okay. that's, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I appreciate your honesty over there, yes. Yes, please. There's a man here. We found one. We found a male. Let me get my, yeah, he's male, I can see, yes. Oh, oh really? Oh, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey there. Hey there. You're saying a girl goes up to a guy and says hi, he's going to be like, hi. But let's say I got fine. So you're saying she, but let's say she were to actually ask you out on a date. Right. Is that okay? Sure. Mike? I was actually him, but I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's totally fine for a girl to initiate, but I think that the guy should then take the lead from there. Plan a date, pick the restaurant. Great. I'm going to come to the actual date itself in a second. Thank you so much. Michael, we're getting better. You're improving, Mike. I have big hopes for you. I'm feeling good about you and your dating life. We're already getting better. I'm training them. That I'm trying my best. By the way, these are going online. I'm getting hundreds of views. I got an email from a woman in Brazil thanking me. They're having dating trouble in Brazil. It's okay. It's not just here in New York City. I'm getting emails and calls from people all over the world. Yes, Chelsea. I actually was talking about this with a couple of my friends on the weekend. One of my guy friends, we asked him, how would you feel if a girl asked you out? And he said, if she seemed interested in me, she wouldn't have to. I would ask her out. If I didn't, then I wasn't interested. Ooh. I think the guys are pretty direct. Ooh. They don't want it. They don't want it. They don't care. 
If they don't want it, they don't get it, they've got to be straight, yes. Exactly. I, I agree with all of this. I think if, you're, if a girl is interested, she can, she can indicate that in other ways. That's what I'm saying. Right. And then if a guy is interested... Can you just be, just, be, just be perfectly honest and open? It's just us over here and thousands of people online. Um, <laughs> let me just ask you. Is it like... I want to I wanna word this in a nice way. If you were to ask someone, you're a little bit too available. Is that a nice, delicate way of saying it? Is that the concern? Desperate. No. Desperate. Thank you. That's a good word. I don't want to use it, but I hear that. If you ask a guy out, you're desperate. Is that what it is? Interesting, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I've always found that with myself and my female friends, when they say to a guy, like, would you like to have dinner with me? More often than not, the guys like that they're confident enough in themselves in the situation to put that out there. Guys like confidence, like, yeah, above really. everything else. Exactly. It's been successful. I, like, I like confidence. Yes, sorry, yes. <laughs> One second. Okay, Stagy, Stagy. Oh, hello, Stagy, yeah. <laughs> yes. With the confidence thing, I think confidence. Let's say, fun fact, you know what, let me, let, me, let me throw something else out of here. Let me throw something else. So you're saying basically, if a guy's not willing, if he hasn't got the guts to ask you out, I'm not interested in him. Okay, if I hear that. But let me ask you, it could be that a guy thinks you are out of his league. It could be. And maybe he's too intimidated to ask a young, attractive, successful woman like you out on a date. Could be. It could be. I know such situations. Okay. I need to be hunters by nature. They need to be go-getters. Oh, this... I don't know where have you been, but you, I need in all my classes. Men need to be hunters. Mm. Girl! Me man. I, I hear it. You know what? I, you know what? You, you're saying something really very, very, very big and important. I think it used to be that way. I don't believe it is anymore. Now they've become... Hunter gatherers, unfortunately. This is the, uh, sorry, what was that from the corner over there? Peanut gallery? That's the problem? Who was that? Yes. Okay. So you're saying, you're saying, you're saying the Jewish culture is such that if a guy's not willing to even like come well, forward and to, okay. I'm saying that when she says it goes to other aspects of, your, of their life and you want them to be hunters, that makes sense because now it's like in the Jewish religion. Yeah. Women want to be cared for. They want a man who's going to take control. Well, that's not religion in the Jewish culture, you mean? In Jewish culture, you're saying? Shh. Where is she? Mm -hmm. I hear. No, I respect that. You're entitled to your... Okay. Okay. I hear. Okay, don't. Here's the big don't. From the whole big study, don't be more than 15 minutes late. 15 to 1, 5. 35... 35% of men and 39% of women believe you can only be up to 15 minutes late for a date, while 11% of singles think being late is always unacceptable. Is it? Always, 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 always? I'm always late for everything, and I think being more than five minutes late is Hillary says she's late for everything, more than five minutes. How about with a good excuse? The subways are always delayed. Stuff happens, stuff happens. I think 15 minutes, though, is a... So I would like to, in the remaining 10 minutes we have together in this class, this was good, I've learned a lot, I'm feeling good right now, and uh, I want to just go through a short checklist that I put together um, on the first date. This may sound a little bit antiquated to some of you, this may sound like common sense to others, but let's go through them. First of all, we said it before, you call to make a date, you don't text. I got a Facebook message last night from a very nice young lady been involved, uh, not here, but another organization I'm involved with for many, many years. And she said, a guy texted me to go on a date. What do you think I should do? And I said, you should respond. Thank you for the date, uh, for the text. 
please call to make the date. She said, there's a little bit of like, now, I do believe that dating on the phone is not a date. So, so if you're thinking you're going to gather information, some people are shy, they're embarrassed, some people have bad grammar, as we know, okay? So speaking, but a phone call should always happen. Are we okay with that? Text message, I'm late with a text is okay. But to make the date a phone call. Please tell me if you have any problems with that one. Yes. Okay, is this true? Is this true? I hear this. Is this true? Calling someone for a day. Is this true? Yes. I want to hear this. I've, either, I've heard this thing and people feel uncomfortable with phone calls nowadays. But just for interest, when you meet someone live, you are talking to them. So the idea of one-on-one -on -one communication, I'm not being facetious, right? Happens to, it's going to happen eventually at some point. So I don't know why a phone call is so bad. Yeah. 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 Aha. So oh, I hear what you're saying. Okay, 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 okay. Very, I'm pleased you said You're saying basically what's happened is the phone becomes an interview, like, like you're going for a job, and that's it. Okay, let me be very clear. When I say phone, when I say phone, this is what I mean. I mean all you're speaking for, I'm going to put a time limit, is literally three, four minutes to make the date. That, the, the time, the place, and I meet you, and that's it. That is common decency, and, and that's going to be for the second date, where the interview is already obsolete, obviously. Second date, third date, fourth date. At that point, you can call, if you're heavily into relationship. But phone calling is what we call in Hebrew, derech eretz. It's a respectful way to interact with people. And I know texting is very common for all of us, emailing, but at least for a first date, it should be for all dates. But you phone up, hey, how are you? Heard nice things about you. I like your profile. Uh, can I meet you? How did this time and place? And then finish. Have things changed that much that we can't make a phone call? Not please, yeah, I'm going to indulge you. <laughs> Feel indulged. Well, you have actually dated most women out of there at this point. Let's be. I've had my fun. But now yes, I'm okay. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. Carry on. Shh. In that sense, what I'm saying is, surely it's good to have a phone to have a conversation first to, to figure out if there's actual I don't think it's. Okay, I want to be very clear on this. Okay, this is my opinion. I'm giving you my opinion. I don't think this is RLR, Rabbi Lawrence's rules. I don't think it's okay to interview on the phone. You can establish it some other way from the profile, from speaking to people. The phone call is merely there to have a conversation and then to make the date. Is that so crazy? I can, you can disagree with me, I'm okay with that. But you cannot make connection on a phone. The only connection on the phone is good Verizon with high bars, that's it. There's no other connection, pick up on a phone, yeah. Yes. Shh. Yeah. 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 Then say someone gives me, here's my phone number, text me. They should say that? Yeah. Here's my phone number, text me. Yeah. Why can you write back and say, do you mind if I call? I is that, is that? I've, I've done both, let me just say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think in, it's what you're saying. Some people are less comfortable with phone calls, especially after, before having actually met them. Okay, let's put this down. Put your hands up, be honest, if you're comfortable with a short phone call before you meet a person. Sure. I think short. I'm talking short. It's not. A, okay, that's most people over here. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm making my own match.com. Say no. To say a short phone call. I hear. I hear. I, I think it's like a little chit chat, but that cannot. One second. Once you're calling, I'm assuming at that point you're going on that date. Once you're on that phone call, it's just a matter of just like pleasantries that when you speak, you're ready to meet. Yeah. Okay, that was number one. Next, number two. Who would have thought we have to go back and teach people how to date? But I've got to do this. Number two, as you mentioned, be on time. It's doable. And if not, I mean, I mean with all respect, when I was dating, <laughs> we didn't have cell phones. I don't know what I used to do. Right? Some were like stuck somewhere. You couldn't contact them, you know? It was really, really difficult. Now we have cell phones. You can call them and say, I'm very, very sorry, I'm running five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. Okay, stuck on the subway, it's fine. 
but be on time. Number three, this is very, very important. This is a very, very important point, which has been lost, and I don't want to sound antiquated. You have to dress nicely on a first date. I don't care if you think there's only 10% chance it's going to work out. You've got to dress nicely, okay? Turning up in those, like, tight pant thing, whatever it is, whatever they're called, everyone's wearing, what are they wearing now? The leggings, or my daughter's got jeggings and jeanings. I don't, no, I don't think that's, and save for the guys as well. I don't want to say the guys have to wear a suit and tie, but you have to dress nicely on a first date, male or female. I think you, that's, that's pretty obvious though, right? Is that obvious nowadays? It's showing that you care enough. It's showing that you care enough. I've heard stories, I, True story. By the way, I'm telling you it's true. There was a girl who said she dated a guy. She called me up and said it was a very nice guy, great date. He had a big stain on his shirt. A big stain. Like gravy, like dripping. Not okay. Um, number four. This is also very important. Choose a place wisely. I mean, I, this sounds obvious to you, but people don't do this. Choose. Now, let me be very clear. Let me tell you why. Shh, listen carefully. This is a very important rule. The better looking the venue is, the better looking you look. I'll say that again. The better looking the venue is, the better looking you look on that first date. Okay? You want to choose a place that is going to bring out your inner beauty. If you take them bowling on a first night, which may be the end or a second date, then that's what they're going to see you as. A greasy bowler with dirty hands. Because all I think about in bowling is, who put their hands in that hole first? That's all I think about when I go bowling out. When I was a kid, I was like, eh, yeah, no, 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 fingers, right? No. Now, you get to an age, you're like, nah. Someone had their fingers in that first. I don't know where those fingers were. Okay? Choose the venue very, very wisely. Number five. This is also lost in our generation. Ask questions. Feign interest. But pretend. Pretend you're interested in their boring life that they have driven to in this part of their life. Ask lots of questions. This is more of one for guys. Guys, for some reason, feel like, so what do you do? Ends up becoming a gateway into 15 minutes of biography, right? Or autobiography in this case, which for the most cases is really, really miserable, right? So ask questions, bring out, connect it to this, is something else which has been lost, and that is be empathetic. Try to get inside their head a little bit, okay? When a woman feels, and even a guy feels, they really get me. Or they care. Or they care, right? That's a good, good sign, okay? Chances are, he's not gonna be so interested in everything you say, neither will she, but if you're empathetic, say, I hear. Be an active listener, and so therefore, Checking your phone on a date is not <laughs> acceptable. And if you need to, ask permission. Do you mind if I check my phone? I just want to look what's happening on Facebook because you're boring <laughs> the life out of me. Ask them. They will understand. And he'll be like, you know what? I am boring. Go right ahead. Update your status right now if need be. Now, jokes aside, it's okay. People don't do this. I know people don't do I know. I know it sounds like almost childish talk. People have to learn how to do this. Okay. Uh, the drinking thing I already mentioned, I don't think people should over drink on dates and be there, no matter how comfortable and how good you are. Don't be too eager. It's off-putting for male and female. Having fun, this is obvious. I want to add one last thing over here before we break for this evening and pick this up next week with some more dating fun with Robert Lawrence. And this, for some reason, has also been lost. But the male is responsible to make sure that the woman gets home safely. Now, I know in our day and age, this hasn't happened because she walks out and he goes her ways, he goes that ways. That doesn't mean you have to take her to the door. By the way, I do believe he should. I do believe he should always take her to the door. That's my personal opinion. But that for most men is like so ridiculous. But that's what you meant to do. And I did it. 
If you cannot, and if you have to go to a subway, you should take it to the subway and ask, are you okay if I leave you over here? Will you be all right on the way home? She's always going to say yes. Like, no, take me to my front door, right? <laughs> but, unless she's completely psychopath. No, but she'll be okay with it. But at least show concern by his, go to your life, here's my life. You should actually be concerned. Can I help you get home? Do you need me? It's okay. okay? Friend, and that is a responsibility that you have. Yeah. My friend who got married like a year ago said that she met her husband online and I remember she told me that she knew that he was like potentially the one went on like their second or third date. They went to dinner or whatever and then they got in the same cab and then they were, I guess they were like closer to his apartment than hers, but he took the cab with her to her apartment and then... Then he went off to his apartment. He dropped her off first, then he took her, absolutely. By the way, girls like that. I know they do, but it's like, it's Derek Harris. Once again, I'm not discussing any crazy capitalistic ideas of dating yet. Maybe in some future, future class we'll do that. But right now, this is what you're meant to do. You're meant to take, or at least make sure she is comfortable getting to a home. That is a responsibility of the male. Anybody like to argue with that point? <laughs> this is great. We love it. You do that? Yeah. That's a very nice gesture. But like, is that so I think that is a very nice gesture. Paying for a cab for her to get home. Yeah, oh, Hadass is a nightmare story. Oh, I'm enjoying I love it already. She wants one to date. He lives in the city, so yes. I drove in. Yes. After the date, he goes to me, how, how do you get back to Brooklyn? So I'm like, oh, I take the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. He goes, tonight you're going to take the bridge because you're going to drive me home. You're going to drive me off home. <laughs> he made you drive him home. And you're thinking about OMG. He said that to you? He said, thanks for saving me 20 bucks and he kicked you out. I had the same wow. That wasn't me. Was it? Okay. My God, that is Chelsea. You had the same thing. A guy made you drop him. He asked me to drive him uptown to his subway station and then he would not get out of my car. He was sitting there playing with my radio for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I need to get more guys in here. Okay, next class. Every single girl, bring one guy. We're going to break up there. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.